parched desert sands of ancient Osiria. Long forgotten secrets are becoming unearthed that could threaten the security of the entire region. Throughout Wati, undead uprisings and once forgotten ancient threats reveal themselves from empty graves. And only our heroes can withstand the forces of The Mummy's Mask. Previously on The Mythical Tabletop. I can finally reveal the name of the book. It's called Empty Graves. Osiris be praised. On 3d6, <laughs> I rolled three fucking one. And she like just burns up. Huzzah! On the zombie has fallen into ash. Septi grabs your hand. She's like, wait, wait, please. And she like pulls you in and gives you a kiss. <gasps> it's shouting out, help, help. Misfits, help! Hey everyone, it's Angela again. This week, I don't have a whole lot to say, but I'm so excited to be back again for another Mithril Monday. Don't forget to follow us across our platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and Reddit to keep up to date with anything that's happening with us. We left you on a little bit of a cliffhanger last week, but the wait is finally over. Here's episode 44, A Little Birdie Told Me. All right, well, so when we last left off, some traumatic things were happening. No! Just a, just a couple <laughs> problematic issues going around the town, huh? Thematic traumatic. <laughs> I don't even know what I just, just said. Just a little bit. I've aged Ignore me. 10 years. <laughs> I've aged 10 years since this night started. Uh, The entire city is being overrun by zombies and other undead. And this is kind of like the first time you guys have fought like real undead. Like you fought like the rogue ghast here and there. But like this is the first time you guys have had like actual undead. Like a couple skeletons. Who cares? There's a like horde of zombies. Zombies everywhere. It's finally becoming an undead AP a little We've bit. We've fought zombies Huzzah. before. I know, but like not like this. It's not like tyrants grasp undead yet, though. Right, exactly. They're, that's like a, a, just an adventure path of <laughs> just undead. It's not a spoiler. That's the theme. <laughs> spoilers. That's all, it literally that's has like a link the t- on the cover. <laughs> spoilers, <laughs> Katie. Oh, my God. It's been out for a long time. It's only been out for a few years. Uh, but yeah, what, what do you guys think? What are your characters thinking in this? Let's let's take a quick zoom in. What does Kareth feel about all these undead showing up? Um, I have a question for you first before because that will <laughs> be background. I have a question in order for to better question. answer the question. Okay. <laughs> it's classic. Is, all right, well, is this, what's up? Is this like the first time that something has happened like this since basically the? Plague of Madness, hundreds. The Plague of Madness wasn't an undead rising. It was a bunch of people going crazy, killing each other. But this is the first time, like, something close to that kind of scale has happened, basically, for this Yeah, I'd probably say so. A little bit, yeah. Then he's probably, like, really taken aback, because he's (laughs) been in Wati. Like, he wasn't born and raised here or anything, but he's been here for at least a couple of decades, I think. Um, And... To his knowledge, this city has always been, you know, relatively peaceful, uh, things like that. Uh, like like every big city, it's going to have their issues, you know, murders, thefts, that kind of stuff. But So how nothing... is he feeling right now? Like, what does he feel about that, though? Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Unnerved. Unnerved. That's a good word. Yeah, because, like I said, it's been, you know, this city of relative peace and safety and like them as adventurers, yeah, they're you know going to be getting into trouble. But now, all of that trouble that was happening out in the necropolis that is separate from the main city is coming here, and it's going to completely shatter that perception of peace and safety that not just Kareth but the rest of the city has too. Tani, you and Habibi have both gone into the necropolis several times. Does that bother you that the necropolis is now coming to you guys? Yeah, because. Tawny has grown up with the necropolis, but it's been like uh, the necropolis is over there. It's <laughs> it's you know something that Tawny had to go to, so now yeah, she she's, had the choice to explore it, right? And so now, like she is almost gonna, she's like almost losing herself in this fear 
because the city was just like overtaken. Um, and then like she had to go make sure her parents were okay. And then now she's coming into this scene where Habibi's parents were put down. And yeah, she doesn't like Habibi's parents, but they're not evil. Like right. they're they're rude and mean people, but she's never seen them <laughs> like be truly evil like these undead are kind of thing. Right. Yeah, they they like in their weird way, they still kind of care for Habibi, right? As far as we can tell. Yeah, like uh, like they didn't agree with Habibi's choices, but Tani could see that like they were still parents. She just didn't agree with how they treated Habibi. But <sighs> So she's kind of like almost, she's freaking out, but it's more of a methodical, like, I have to get through this before I can really freak out. So she's very focused right now, but she, I don't know if you can imagine it, like where you're really focused, but you can feel the panic attack starting to rise up in you. But Mm. you're like, I have to get through this before I can start panicking. Habibi, do you reciprocate these same feelings? Habibi is panicking. <laughs> just full on panic. Just like hyperventilating. Just like. <gasps> yeah. Like, no wait for just, him. You felt like he's giving everything he had to try to keep his parents from like actually dying. Like sure he's like, you know, had a rough relationship, but he still loves his parents. Mm-hmm. And like to see him die in front of him would be beyond traumatic, especially when he like has to do something in order to save them. Like, if he were to be mm. that useless, he would be having a major crisis of faith and, like, in himself as well. Do you have any more heal spells at all? Like, not even in your spell slots? Oh, I have three focus points right now. <laughs> and I Lay on hands gloves. is what next? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> all right. All right. So you still had other emergency options. But I used all my heal spells, and those were, like, my only options during the fight because I couldn't get mm. close enough to lay on hands. Yeah, it was rough. You're just, like, channeling heals for, like, three rounds in a row. It was, like, just boom, boom, boom. You couldn't even move. You're just, like, full actions, just all of them just channeling heals. Yeah, because I had to save both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what about you, Tariq? You actually saw your parents die, right? Well, yeah, in a way, yes. Um, he saw the results less, of his right? parents' death, yeah. Um, exactly. So, so you have a bit of that trauma. Does Is this, like, bringing any of that back? Yeah, and, you know, as soon as, like... I think that's why he felt obligated instead of staying like with Septi and helping her figure things out. He felt obligated to go help Tani check on her family. And then, of course, when we find out that Habibi's parents are in danger, of course, he's going to help save Habibi's parents. And in his head, he's still worried about like what this means with his uh, his adopted parents and like where they could be. And at the same time, he's almost relieved that they're not there as far as he knows. Like, that they're not in so Wadi. Not in the city, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so so there's a little bit of a relief on that end, but it's still like, well, if they're not here, then where are they? Kind of. Um, he's like, it's it's kind of been in the back of his mind, but, um, you know, we've had other things at the forefront. And, and you know, the other people that he's going to be worrying about, well, they're already there with him. So he's not really worried about anybody else other than Septi. So, and he is afraid, like this does scare him and he probably wouldn't be afraid to admit that. It's not your number one fear, but is it kind of creeping up the list now? Well, yeah, just losing anybody close <laughs> is kind of at the top of his list. Yeah. Uh, Kepri, you're last up. What, what is, how does she feel about all this? I, how does Ramses feel about all this too? Like, I mean, these are your parents that Tariq is talking about, not just his adopted parents. Oh, I know. And uh, I think for Kepri, she's incredibly concerned she's trying to keep a straight face you know it's really difficult for her at the moment but she knows like things need to get done right now and the thing with her parents is they've been missing maybe they're safe maybe they're in a spot where they won't be affected or what if they came home what if they're home waiting for us and they can't get to us and of course Ramses is a dog so he's just freaking the fuck out (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so in, in like a survival instinct so there's always like the fight or flight response right but mm-hmm. like is there is there any part of you that wants to just like f- uh like just like f- like freeze up and just like see like you're seeing all this happening around you or are you actually like engaging this like in the fight response or are you like trying to fly as well like what what is kepri's response to that so she's definitely a fight person so she's going to fight <laughs> She does freeze a little bit though. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. She would she is one of the people who's gonna it's 
let me back up. So what we say is you have fight, flight, or freeze. Those are the three responses. So I think she's the type who's going to freeze at first, need to process, and then she's going to start fighting. But in the back of her mind, she's worried still about like what's going to happen, what happens if A, B, C, or D happen, etc. It bothers me that those three don't rhyme. <laughs> it's, it's fight, it's fight or fright. Sorry, it's fight or flight, and then also freeze. It's just fight, flight, it's fright. Alliteration. I don't like alliteration I mean, as much as I like rhyming. Maybe fright is a better option. Fight, flight, it or is. fright. <laughs> Who came up with this? Who came up with this alliteration? I want to speak to them. Mm-hmm. I, just, I have a few words I need to exchange. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> Let's see how they respond when so I come Wallace up with this. response is fight. Okay. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, I'm gonna fight whoever made this. Oh my god! <laughs> well, before we jump in, as a little bird comes swooping in from the from the starry night skies, screaming out in panic, like, "Please help! 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 I need your help!" Uh, we have a hero point to award. Ooh. All of you guys are gonna start with one, except for Katie, who's gonna start with two Whoa. as this week's MVP. Really? You're gonna to for sure really? remind me what the hell I did. <laughs> I would love to remind you what you did. I vote for Karith. He really came in clutch, saving Habibi's parents. MVP to Karith. He took care of those zombies with expert skill and held his own against our first mummy. Because remember, we had our first mummy fight last week. And then also, uh, MVP, this week should go to Karith. Karith is taking, uh, is really taking Weapon Innovator to a whole new level with this new ability of his, and he's really going to show us how to make those different hits. Uh, I think they're, they're uh, referring to that uh, <laughs> it, that attachment you put on your oh, thing. Oh, yeah, that thing's fun. <laughs> and then honorable mentions both go to Habibi. Uh, had, had it not been for his amazingly clutch heal spells in both fights, we would have had a lot more zombies to deal with, and not to mention Habibi could would have become an orphan. Oh yeah. yeah. Excuse me. I'm ex- yeah. I'm excited to see how Habibi deals with nearly losing his parents like this too. Maybe Osiris has therapy or counseling too. Oh. And an honorable mention to Habibi for those amazing, powerful, life-saving heals. He's the best cleric. <laughs> Two very different lengths of honorable mentions. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. So when we last left our heroes, they had fought, they had fought their first mummy. They had ran they had run out of the auction house to see the entire city of Wati going into chaos. They ran around the corner to try and save their families, and they heard Habibi's parents, who had left earlier that night, screaming out in panic just around the corner. As they go to help save them, they defeat the zombies, and a little bird, a masked bird, comes flying in, screaming, "Band of misfits, please help! Please help!" What do you guys want to do? What do you guys want to do first? Because both of these things are demanding your attention. What comes first? Go. Um, where's the where bird at is on the, the map? Yeah, like where would the <laughs> bird is, kind of be? Or is it just she? She flies. <laughs> she flies and she lands on the fountain in the middle of the area, okay. right there. Oh, okay. I see her now. <laughs> well, I was gonna do a theater of the mind, but if you guys need the tokens, I guess I we can like put the token visual, on the map. I like a visual, Andrew. It does help. All right, help. The, the little bird flies there, and she's like, "Please, please help!" She's flapping her wings; it's like fluttering everywhere. Feathers are flying all over the place. She has this like plague mask uh, on her face. So, what do you guys want to do? Um, it's a little weird to see a bird in a mask. I don't know about you all. Um, well, absolutely. I'm gonna um, run up and check on my parents. Yeah. So, so can we do like right- a? Can we do like a check on the bird while they're ch- while he's checking on his parents? Yeah, let's Before split we even the party, like shall we? Well, we're all in the same area. <laughs> kind of thing. It's an, I know um, that. It's let's split their so, focus. Splitting the attention, two different scenes are happening simultaneously. Habibi and Kareth, you're dealing with Habibi's parents to the north. Tariq, Tani, and Kepri, you're dealing with uh, the little bird. Is that correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Kepri, can you move yes. forward with the light? Kepri can absolutely <laughs> move forward with the light. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is that a little easier for everyone to see, or do you need me to come up further? Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with Habibi and Kareth. So you guys are, you guys, uh, well, Kareth, you're already there. Um, you glance over your shoulder, and you see this corpse next to the wagon. It seems like it was chewed up by the zombies. There was, like, bite marks and, like, f- like chunks of its flesh pulled out. Um, but a little glint of silver catches your attention around the neck. Habibi, on the other hand, you run straight up to your parents. I assume you run up to your mommy, just like gu- come up and hug her. She's still on the ground, and she has like cuts and bruises and blood all over the place. And um, Shabaka and Nenet, both your parents, they kind of like are slowly gathering their strength and trying to stand up. 
Mama, are you okay? Uh, uh, oh, uh, Mary! Mary, what are you doing here? It's not safe! What? Did you... Was that you? Did you save us? Yes. I, by Osiris, we've been saved. <laughs> Shabaka kind of like stands up. He like strains a little bit. His, his bushy mustache kind of like bristles a little bit. He goes, that was you, boy. You did all this healing power. Yes, I used up every heal spell I had. He kind of like looks up towards the heavens slightly, just like glancing up. He doesn't move his head. And he kind of like furls down at you and like scowls a little bit. He's like, you've been studying, boy, haven't you? Every day, father. Every day. Um, Nenet is kind of like tensely like looking between the two. He's like, can we, can we not do this here? We need, to get, we need to get somewhere safe, please. We should get back home. The guards will protect us there. It uh, would probably be safer if we took them to the Grand Mausoleum, don't you think, Habib? Habibi? The Grand Mausoleum. Ha! What does what does what does Farazma have in the face of Osiris? Osiris is the name of this land. He will protect us. We should go back home, where we will have we have our own supplies there. We have our own family. We have our guards. We will be safe there. Mary agrees, right? I mean, sure, sure. I I'm not going to be going back home though. I need to help my friends and get to the mausoleum. No, no, Mary, Mary, what do you mean? No, this is the time to stay together as a family. Oh, this is the time. Oh, Carrot oh. is getting heated. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but people still need our help, so I can't just go home and hide. Mary, don't be foolish. We can't help everyone. We have to help ourselves right now. I mean, from what I could see, you, you need all the help you can get, but... I need to help others too. Uh, He's starting to get angry again. He like he, he his uh, his uh, his mustache bristles again. He's like, you better watch what you say, boy. You can't talk to me like that. I'm your father. You understand? You will respect me. Well, you respect me because uh, a couple minutes ago you wouldn't have been my father. You would have been dead. <gasps> oh, he has a really good point. He looks. That is a very he looks good like point. He's, Dang. Sh- Shabaka looks like he's about to say something uh, a little bit more um, venomous, and then Nenet kind of just puts a hand on his shoulder. Habibi, Mishdelweti, not right now. We, we should go. If Mary wants to join us, he will come at his own time. We, I trust that we won't lose two children in, in the same night. Come on. Aww. And then he kind of like shrugs his shoulders, and like he slumps a little bit. He goes, I better see you back home before morning. I mean... I'll be back home eventually. <laughs> uh, he kind of like gives you a side. I was like, man, this is why I never had boys, and then, or, or oh. I never liked sons. And, and they both, uh, they both uh, walk off. Kareth flips off his son. bag. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Kepri, Tariq, and Tawny, you guys are looking at this bird, and it, she's flapping frantically. She's like, please, please help, help, help. Would you guys like to roll some knowledge checks to see what the fuck this bird is? Uh-huh. Yes, uh-huh. I do. Um, what do I roll? <laughs> Nature? Yes, of course. Rolling? No, <laughs> no. Actually, I will take a religion check if you would like Ooh, instead. But it's because a bird, it's, so I can I roll nature? It's my, it might not be a living bird. Oh. Fine, I'm rolling religion. <laughs> he said that this is taking place basically at the same time. Simultaneously, yeah. So you guys are having, yeah, you guys can like look over like over your shoulders. You can see like Habibi and Kareth like yelling at these two uh, uh, adults, Habibi's parents. Meanwhile, you guys are like, what the fuck is this bird exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave that family drama over there. Not going to deal with it right now. Like we, um, we know that their his parents are okay at this point, And like this bird is now our focus because squirrel. <laughs> And she mentioned, right, and she also <laughs> mentioned you guys by name. Like she true. mentioned your team name, so she knows you guys somehow. We're um, popular. <laughs> we're popular. We uh, Tariq it. and Kepri, both of you guys have studied this thing before, mm. or at least have heard stories about what a Nasoi is. Nasoi. A Nasoi is a type of psychopomp. They are servants of Phrasma. They appear to resemble whippoorwills, uh, a type of sparrow, which is the holy symbol, or not the holy symbol, the holy, like, uh, sacred animal of Phrasma and her church. So this whippoorwill swallow, um, in particular, they have they have these big leather plague doctor's masks on their heads, and uh, that is kind of how they represent their faction. They are... Uh, servants from the outer planes. They are not mortal birds. They're not real birds. They're they're known as monitors. They're psychopomps. They come from the boneyard way beyond. 
Um, but sometimes they show up into the mortal plane and they sometimes do uh, lots of, usually they, they're like witnesses. They're, they're, um, they, they don't do direct judgments of souls, but uh, they sometimes come to the material plane to just, yeah, sometimes they kind of hang out. They kind of just explore. But this one seems to be panicked. And you know that it's probably not because of the undead, because psychopomps in general, not just Nasoi, all psychopomp are very anti-undead. If they see undead, they'll try to kill it. They're not afraid of the undead, they're mortal enemies of the undead. Oh my. But this one in particular seems to be afraid. So either it's something hmm. way above her pay grade Ooh. or something more personal. Like a me like sent on a message as a messenger, you mean? Maybe, yeah. Um, oh. Tariq is going to step forward, recognizing this as a, potentially a bird of phrasma, and he goes, who's in need of our aid? Um, she goes, uh, she goes, captured, captured, help, help, stolen, underground, in the, in the, in the, in the puddles, I need help now, please! Where? Where? And she, she, seem, she seems frantic, she seems like she's almost irra- <laughs> <laughs> she seems almost irrational <laughs> because of her, like, panic, and there seems to be so much going on. Uh, you can try to calm her down with a religion check uh, uh, to try and, like, remind her of her duty to serve um, Phrasma or her, or you can roll a diplomacy to, to just try and, like, comfort her. Well, oh, I can't just talk to animals. I have to have a special thing for that, Well, she's I? speaking common to you guys. Since I'm a druid, do I get any, like, additional bonuses? <laughs> She's not a real bird. She's not a bird bird. Okay, so well, we can roll like another religion um just to just to see how like almost kind of like handle animal or sort of <laughs> Yeah, either a religion to like remind her of her duty to like um to like be like present in this in okay. this moment or a diplomacy to just calm her down and like just hey, it's okay, relax, like whichever you prefer. So, um <laughs> Tariq is not going to be any help. He tries to like, you know, like he's snapping his fingers and he's like Hey, focus, what's going on? And he rolled a two on the die, so he he only got a 14. <laughs> oh, Arcana. He's like snapping Ooh. at her and it's making it worse. Yeah, I got a nat 20. Ooh. Okay, all of right. Course. So, so Kepri better. being a druid, even though this isn't a true bird, according to the Sky Daddy, is going to try <laughs> oh my gosh. and kind of <laughs> calm down. I assume this bird was like fluttering and flying around, and she's going to slowly sit on the ground until the bird sits as well. So she's sitting and trying what? to calm down, Wait, lower the on. situation. No. What? Why are you doing my job describing the results of your role? <laughs> she just, I got a she nat, nat 20. 20. <laughs> you don't know if it's a... All but right, I'm telling you how <laughs> Kepri is trying to calm the bird down. You can tell me whether it works or not. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you kind of described it like it did work. It works. So... <laughs> I would be really oh, sad if it didn't. And then Kepri's going to ask the bird once the bird is panting and maybe shivering a little upset. She's going to say, <laughs> my friend, who needs our help? It's, 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 it's Temenib. <gasps> He's been captured. Kepri's like, oh no, not Temenib. You know, she, she's a little soft for him. What do you mean? What is, <laughs> what does he need? He's 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 been captured. He went to the puddles after during the party, and and he he got captured by by the silver chain. What the heck? Back is to Kareth. What the fuck is a silver chain? Oh, hmm. Back to Kareth. Around the guy's neck is a silver chain, as I described earlier. On the the mummy, the zombies. On the on the corpse of the guy driving the wagon. Because remember, oh. the scene where the zombies attacked was a wagon that had toppled over like its wheel is shattered and destroyed. And like part of the wagon is crumbling apart. And the driver is dead. He he was eaten uh, by the zombies who are now dust and flying in the air. <laughs> but on him, he's got eight gold pieces. Cool. And he's got a silver chain. But on it, it has a symbol of... Um, uh, why don't you guys roll me society checks? Whoever's examining this necklace. Okay. Well, only did, help at the mention two. of silver chain, was Kareth just like, wait, wait a second. <laughs> silver chain. <laughs> well, I, I, simultaneously, let's let's have this like camera like jump back in between the two of them. So like, cause uh, so the bird, the the Nasoi, she kind of like goes, yeah, it's it's the silver chain, and then as she says it, like it, the camera cuts <laughs> to Kareth pulling the chain off the guy's <laughs> neck, holding it up for the camera to see. He's like, hey, I think I found something. <laughs> Uh, oh man, we're having fun. The silver chain, 
is a feared gang in Wati. They're kind of like the mafia, but they're um, they primarily deal in in grave robbing, and they are notorious throughout Wati. They are feared, uh, kind of like what's his name, the guy from Chicago. Al Capone. Al Capone, <laughs> kind of like Al Capone and his gang. <laughs> Andrew, you're except such a instead goof. of uh, <laughs> except instead of alcohol, it's a uh, grave ro- or grave robbing and graven goods that they steal back from the from the necropolis. Because remember, it's not just illegal for people to go in for their safety; it's illegal to go in so they don't plunder the goods of the dead. That belongs to the dead. It is sacred. It's holy. So um, Tanya and uh, Habibi kind of breaking in all the time is kind of like a more of like like a sacred religious rebellion kind of thing. Like, hey, hey look at us! We're 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 going into the holy land. Well, whatever. But, um, but we never these stole guys. They anything. also don't care. We literally just went in and like <laughs> looked into some houses, but we never took anything. We were never well, disrespectful. Fair enough. All right, you just you're you're respectfully. It was always about the adventure. You're respectfully going into the into the chapel, basically. <laughs> But these guys, <laughs> they don't care about the respect part. They're like, oh, you're telling me they were buried with gold? How much is that worth? Holy shit. Yeah, I'll do an underground uh, <laughs> black market thing to get all that shit. God, say no more, fam. And th- nobody is fully aware of their headquarters, except this bird seems to be saying that they might have found it. So she keeps flapping her wings. She's like, Temenib, he was hot on their trails. He was undercover. He was trying to infiltrate this gang. And and, and this other person came in and they, they, he tried to like stop them and he confronted them and they captured him. And he's now, he's now, uh, he's now their prisoner. I, I, I think if we don't do something soon, but don't save him, he might die. Someone give uh, this bird a chill pill. <laughs> I can't chill. My friend is dying. Well, Maybe. I don't know. I just can assume you lead us so. There? I I can I can. Do you want to fall right now? I can take it to the puddles. Um um. We need we give us a moment. So Capri's gonna just be like, guys guys, come here. Like I'm sorry. Just quick huddle, quick huddle. Okay, Habibi walks up. All right, guys. Um, first off, I don't want Tebinov to have any problems. But what if it's a trap? <laughs> um, can that we? Is a good point. That's a lot of things. It could be a trap, but. It seems quite odd that he would um, be infiltra- infiltrating a gang on the night of the lottery. On the night of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Does it so not? We're... The timing of it, the timing of it seems odd to me. That my he question. was just hot on this gang's trail, but there's this big event that the Phrasma Church is putting on, I don't know, Temple, I guess, is putting on. Um you know, and he was part of that, wouldn't you think that he would be involved with the lottery? And I mean, he was there. Why was he investigating a gang? Kepri brings up a good point. Is this bird telling us the truth or leading us into a trap? Where is the puddles? Like, is it on the way to the Grand Mausoleum? Isn't it uh, like, kind no, of like so the slums it, of the city or something like that? Yeah, so if you guys... Uh, oh, I, I, I said the puddles. I meant to say the veins. I'm so sorry. Uh, so... <laughs> In between the midwife district, which is where you guys are in currently, it's the main, like, central downtown, like, hub of the city, uh, and the necropolis, there's kind of, like, this wedge, kind of like a triangle that wedges itself to the north part of the river, and that's where, like, the, the dockyard is, and that's where the the district we call the veins are, and that's where um, this bird is saying, come follow me quick. And it's uh, directly opposite the direction of the Grand Mausoleum. It's also the opposite direction of the Morning Sun District, which is mm. like the more affluent, rich people place. So it's literally the opposite direction of where you guys want to go. Okay, so the Puddles is just like a name that like the locals gave it kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I misquoted that. It's the Veins. I think the Puddles is uh, Absalom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Oops. that's why it sounded so familiar. <laughs> veins, Puddles. Whatever, yeah, puddles same difference. Is, uh, Tomato, tomato. It's the same district, just one is called the Puddles, the other one is called the Veins. The Veins is, it's called the Veins, by the way, because of, like, a network of, um, like, irrigation channels, so... That are kind of, you know, like, like, veins going across the city. Yeah, exactly. So... That's kind of cool. It's also leading us in the opposite direction of everything that's happening right now. Question is, if it wasn't trustworthy, how do they know our name? Like, why us, I guess, if... Like, why would someone be trying to lure us otherwise? You can try rolling a perception check to sense motive. Okay. Uh, Okay. Let's do it. See, like, I... I don't know. Tawny is, like, not really being that 
suspicious. Like, she understands everyone's concerns. But she also knows that there's a lot of energy that goes into having these, right? Like, they... Like, mm-hmm. if they're, if it's coming to find someone, then either that the person that sent it is really in danger or the person that sent it needs to be taken care of. Uh, all good points. They uh, are very good points. Tariq and um, Kepri, you guys are, are looking at this little bird and she seems panicked, which is probably where her story is kind of falling apart at the seams. She's barely getting the words out in, in this uh, rush to deliver the information as quickly as possible. Habibi, on the other hand, um, you recall back a time in the in the during the auction itself, early in the evening before the sun fully fully set, and you remember seeing uh, Temenib, and he was kind of like nudging his shoulder a lot. You seem, uh, if you remember closely in your memory, you remember seeing like talon marks on his shirt, even though no bird was there in the first place. You think uh, you think back to your lore on uh, on on Nasoy, and you know that they have the ability to turn themselves invisible. You think that she was probably with him the entire time. Oh, that Tim, he had a Nasoy the entire time. Oh, <laughs> that jerk! Just kidding. He's still hot. He's so mysterious now. <laughs> oh my God. I know that makes him more alluring. So let's go <laughs> rescue him. Okay. All right, Kepri, everyone's okay. You guys are gonna come. Oh, that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Cassine, by the way. Hi, it's, it's. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet you guys earlier, but please, we have to hurry now. I just want to say my like image is all of us standing around and we all put our hands and go one, two, three, break. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said the bird's name was Nasoy. No, it, that's. That's it. No, that's, that's, that's the, the kind of bird it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you spell let me it just out uh, <clears throat> let me just yeah. change So that her name my is <laughs> her name is Cassine. She is a Nasoy. A Nasoy is the type she is. She is it's not a bird. A Nasoy. And her name is <laughs> She is not a bird. I wanna get that clear. I don't care how much the druid is saying she's a bird, she's not a bird. I, she only looks like a bird. bird is a bird is a, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a fucking bird. <laughs> well she's not quacking, so fuck you. <laughs> I wonder if she tastes like one. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> that anyway, was dark. Cassine, could you please lead us towards the veins where you left Temenib? So we can help yes. him. Let's go. All right. Uh, with the camera kind of like swoops out from this scene, it kind of like zooms out into um, uh, into the to like the the overarching like helicopter view of the city as she winds you guys carefully through the alleyways, and she you guys are like ducking and diving and uh, swinging one way or the other. You see some undead up ahead. You're like, no, let's go around this alleyway instead. It takes you guys about an hour because of this, but eventually you guys make it to the veins. Uh, as you guys approach, uh, you find this entire place is, uh, it's dark, it's desolate, and it seems to be that people are, uh, whatever poor people unfortunately live here, they are running around uh, in panic, kind of, like they're just trying to get out of there. These are people who are normally dock workers, they are normally, you know, not the wealthiest off, and this entire place is in chaos. Uh, as you guys approach, Cassine kind of like catches her breath finally now that she sees you guys are like actively helping and she gathers herself and she explains how uh, Temenib came here. She goes, we were, we, during the auction, Temenib, he was, he was, he was trying to keep an eye on one of the attendees. He was a silver chain agent and we noticed that the silver chain agent like started leaving the the party early so Temenib said he wanted to follow too but he didn't want to seem suspicious so he wanted to say bye to you but was in a rush to leave and then as he left we we finally made our way here and then something weird happened and all these undead started coming out and that broke his cover and then he got captured because of it oh so you should have explained that before (laughs) I was scared okay I'm sorry it's okay we forgive you all right well where's the entrance to this thing she kind of uh, leads you behind another alleyway until you guys see this ashen, kind of like charred up uh, area. And uh, anyone who's lived in Wati for for a while, actually all of you guys, why don't you guys roll me a society check, or if you have it, Wati lore or something like that. Ooh, oh, I think you could I use that very often. Lore. What about architecture lore? <laughs> um, I can, you, you, I can, sure. You know what? Roll me an architecture. Uh, lore. I never get to use it. What about old gods lore? 
No, the go old God's lore is absolutely not going to count. I only have a plus two to the so society. Well, sucks to suck. Should have trained society. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all of you guys r uh, remember hearing stories of a couple years ago, uh, not, not that long ago, that this entire place, this entire district kind of burnt down. And um, they, it, this place used to be a brickwork. In other words, a place where they build bricks uh, for construction elsewhere. They they came here and they used the water to help cool down the bricks as they uh, turned the straw and the mud into into clay bricks. And there were a lot of kilns here to help, like you know, uh, rapidly dry and bake the bricks into place. And a fire was started, and this whole place burnt down. But it was never priority to repair it, so it kind of just stayed ruinous throughout this entire time. And as you guys kind of like peek around this corner, you see this ruined down place. And it seems to be one of the only places where people aren't running to or from. And it seems mostly deserted. Like nobody has gone there before uh, for a long, long time. And she kind of leads you guys here. And just before you guys are able to like get any closer, she kind of like, um, uh, like perches on, uh, let's say Tariq's shoulder. And... Uh, she whispers something uh, quietly for you guys to hear. She goes, "Be careful, because as uh, a, a Temitive, he right before he got captured, we discovered something. It's not just the Silver Chain Gang in there. There's there's other people there. Like I said, they're this this cult, and they're very scary, bad people. I don't know too much about it. I don't think Temitive did either, but they're bad news, and you should be very careful when you approach." Ooh. Interesting. Okay. Are they and then she immediately goes, bad people that deserve to be killed or should yes. we attempt diplomacy? They're very bad people, but I don't know if they deserve death. Maybe, uh, you know, justice at the courts, but I'll, I'll be, I'll be close behind, but I just won't, I won't be able to help much in battle. So I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna peace out. And she goes <laughs> invisible. But if you need me, just call me. I'll, I'll help if you need me. She's just gonna peace out. Call me, beep me if you want to reach me. <laughs> Bye, homie. <laughs> um, well, first off, I want to do a perception check just in general to see, like, do we hear anything at this point? Do yeah, we see idea. anything? Sure. Is anybody else going to roll these perception yes, checks? Yes, I, I am. is also looking around and listening. And, oh, so All is right. Ramses. Ramses is sniffing. He's using his sniffer. <laughs> hey, one of the few times you're appropriately using Ramses. I know. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys approach and you see these two doors in front of you. They seem ancient. Like, the, you know they're not actually thousands of years old. They're from, like, modern Wati. But because of the fire and the lack of upkeep, they seem much older than they actually are. They are, however, opened. And as you guys kind of look around, um, all of you except for Kareth notice a bunch of footprints that seem relatively fresh, like, within the last day. Knowing the history of this place, that shouldn't be, you know, possible as in... This place was abandoned. Nobody should be going here. It's dangerous. But yet, there are footprints. Now, they could just be Temenips, but there are also many more footsteps. Um, there, uh, the other thing I will say is if you guys are trying to be stealthy, light is probably not going to help you keep stealth. Aww. So what would you guys like to do? Because it is nighttime, so they will see your light from far away. I don't think I have like low light or anything. I don't either. I'm just a poor human. I don't think. Uh, I think maybe Kareth is the only one, unless Catfolk also. Have Catfolk low have low light. They don't have uh, yeah. dark vision. Yeah. I do not have dark vision. So if we don't have any kind of light, I will not be able to see very well. Yeah. Same here. So. Well, let's just turn around. Let's go home. <laughs> I think we're just gonna have to have the light. I, I'm. We're just gonna have to. Like. All right. Yep. I will cast light back on. If we need to, then I will just turn it off really fast. Uh, can I also hold out a torch? I have an ever burning torch. Uh, sure. Would there be a way to like, if we had a light and like we kind of covered it, like if we um, I think I have a stone that we could cast the light on, and like if okay. we held it in our hand to where we oh, don't want concentrated have... the light, can we do that, or is that just gonna be like don't any light's gonna let have... us give us away? Don't one of so us have that fact, amulet that um, Valriana had that kind of goes around your head? That's what I meant. Huh? It's not an amulet. Oh, okay. It's the, um, it's oh, a, the, Aeon the Aeon Stone. Aeon Stone. 
I think you guys sold that. Uh, did we? Uh, oh. I don't think I, thought, I, um, think I have it in my I will, I will also say, fun fact of the day, they actually, since the remaster, light no longer works by targeting an item. Uh, you create oh. an orb of light that sheds bright light in a 20 foot radius. And that light can be any color you choose. And it can be uh, in the same space as a willing creature. You can attach the light so it follows this creature or you can then send it out 60 feet. And then it can come back uh, as you uh, command it. So it's now a mobile light. It's kind of cool. Well, okay, can we try? Because yellow light's very bright and noticeable. Maybe we should try a darker light, like maybe a blue light. <laughs> it's funny that you think I'll allow that to actually do anything useful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, okay, I can, I can make it a blue light. Uh, let's see here. I, I think we're, I think y'all are trying to make this a little bit too complicated. Overthink yeah. It. We have we. Yeah, I that's like very possible. So so the facts are we need light to be able to see. We're going to be seen. End of the line. Let's go into it knowing that we're going to be seen. Like we we can't be sneaky. Okay. We just can't. <laughs> Ta -da. How's that for blue light? That, you like that? It looks nice. You like that? There you go. Blue light. It didn't help. Tawny's <laughs> right. It didn't help. So all that work. <laughs> I told you it wouldn't, but it's fine. <laughs> Like I said, it was cute. Uh, all right, as you guys turn around, like as you get closer to this door, um, you hear these two voices like, wait, what's that blue light? Hey, hey, get in position. Come on, quick, get in position. <laughs> Tawny. Is <laughs> is Tawny's gonna turn and look at the two with the light. We got, we got company. <laughs> oh, um, um, let me turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna help. <laughs> it's just gonna make it harder for us. That's okay, I got mine. Habibi's like, I'm not putting down my torch. <laughs> Habibi <laughs> like snaps her fingers and it goes away. And then Habibi's just looking at her with his torch still on. So she just snaps her fingers and puts it back on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right, so <laughs> what, what else do you guys want to do? Open the door. You ready? It's already open. Uh, yeah, oh, is it? Open. Yeah, well. that's how we could, they could see our light and that's how we could hear them. Well, walk through the yeah. door. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys around the corner, you you see these two little thugs and they're wearing like all these black clothing. He's like, there they are, go get them. And we're going to jump right into our initiative. <laughs> Dang you guys it. may roll stealth if you want. Uh... <laughs> If you would like to roll initiative that way, uh, if not, just uh, just roll perceptions. You know, I'm just I'm just saying. Let's see, what is my stealth? <laughs> I rolled a nat one. <laughs> no perceptions. Wow, Kareth rolled higher than me. <laughs> oh, I love I how we're 24, either. 23, but 22, <laughs> and then 17, 16, 14, 11. <laughs> <laughs> the it's three that were like, <laughs> well, only Kareth and Tawny were kind of. Putting the facts down instead of <laughs> trying to figure out how to make light sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys. Short of the best. matter is, you can't. <laughs> Top of the we initiative, Karis. It is your turn. All right. Uh, first action, Karis, because these guys, we just came in the doors, and these guys are to the south of us. So I'm going to move. 10 feet kind of down to the south to be in range of one of them. So first action, move. I'm going to target this guy. Uh, second action, we would have had plenty of time for me to fix my weapon from the unstable before. So I'm going to yeah, go ahead. I assume you guys are full health, full focus points, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we, it did take us an hour to get to this okay. location. Yeah. Second action, <laughs> overdrive. Of course. So let me do the crafting <laughs> check. Ooh, nope. I'm going to re-roll it. That was only a 16. Oh. I'm pretty sure I need total. a 20, I think, at this level or something yep. like that. Oh! Oh! Is my DC 20? <laughs> it is 20 exactly. Oh! I got a 30! <laughs> oh! Nice. So I got a critical right. success, boys and girls. I don't get the critical. Enjoy your crit. I don't get the critical <laughs> success on my overdrive very often. That was amazing. All right, and final action is I'm gonna hit him. <laughs> All that preparation. I know. Hey, you gotta get back into the <laughs> swing. Yeah. Yeah. Get it. Oh, uh -huh. I am on a roll. Natural <laughs> twenty for a thirty-four oh. to crit. 
Let's see if you can roll enough damage to kill hey, this guy. I, I don't think you can. Rude. Rude. Go, Kareth, go. Not a Mega 10 strike, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Evil laughter. <laughs> 51 points oh, of damn. damage. Oh I, my gosh. Dead? No. Oh, he's man. near death. Dang. You think I'm going to. They would have really died if well. they had. Yeah, correct, but they don't have 51 hit points. They have a little bit more than that. <laughs> well, he is also clumsy yeah, like, one. I have 53 hit points, so they probably have 53 hit points. <laughs> well, he's also going <laughs> to no, be clumsy that, that one out. until the start of my <laughs> next turn. All right, until the start of your next turn. Yep. Got it. And that oh, is the boy. end of that. That was a good round one. Yeah, yeah. Good that job. That was a good, good job, round. Good, good job, Good job, Kareth. <laughs> All right, Habibi. Uh, it is your turn as the cleric. I believe it is your responsibility to heal anyone who's injured on the field. So uh, I could use some healing if you don't mind. Just to, um, I don't you know. know. Uh, He's wearing clothes stride, that... <laughs> lay on hands like a... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right, so I am You could do it. <laughs> Nah, how about nah? Uh, I am going I don't want to stop you from doing creative things. Like, if you wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be nah. creative and heal the enemy? Um, He's fine with that. <laughs> totally fine. How about I, I just move closer for now? I'm going to move down uh, past Tani, past Tariq, and be just behind Kareth. And um, I see the two people, and uh, Kareth really knocked this one down for quite a number. <laughs> So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and yeah, try to hit both of them with a uh, electric arc. Oh. <laughs> DAC, dude. What even is your DC at this level? I don't remember anymore. Um, 21, basic reflex. 21? Yeah, they'll be fine. <laughs> All right, uh, I got 20 and 25. That's a success on both of them. Easy peasy. I'm not too worried. I'll take half damage. How much damage is that? Um, I had eight points total, so half would be four. Perfect. Hey. He's still alive, baby. Oh, man. We're not dead yet. He has more hit points than me, guys. <laughs> it's shocking, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and All right, Tawny, it is your turn. And maybe you will be the one to finally kill this guy who's, like, near death. <laughs> That's near death. Okay. Tawny's going to run south. Um, she's going to step between Karith and um, the guy that has a half mask. Hmm. Yeah, and then I'm going to rage. Shocking. <laughs> Fantastic. She did the thing. I, and the I'm going to be using bludgeoning on my earth smasher. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's cooler than... At least behead them with dignity. <laughs> you're going you're to smash his skull in? No, no, no. We prefer to smash their skull in. You oh. know, this room needs a little more Fisk decorating style. with their brains. <laughs> Tawny smash. Um, well, I'm not going to do much of anything with a natural one, oh. so I'm going to reroll. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Use your hero <laughs> points. Yes. Um, I rolled a 10 on the die for a 24. A 24 is a hit. Okay. If you had to know. <laughs> and I rolled 16 we we points of know. damage. And this guy is oh. crushed b behind the weight of your <laughs> mighty hammer. You splinter his skull as it like crushes into the brains. Is that what you guys want me to do? Describe all this gruesome shit? Yes. Well, yeah. also lucky for Tawny you guys. Tawny probably gets some brains in her fur. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the guy who was next in initiative, which means, unfortunately, I don't get a turn yet. Tariq, you do, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we have our way, you won't get a turn at all. Shut the fuck up. I really... Um, I don't, I, unless, unless Tariq gets a crit, I don't think this guy is dying before I get a turn. Uh, maybe. Ooh, maybe Kepri will get a crit. Mm, I don't know. It's hard you, to tell. Did you just no. jinx me? Did you just I'm trying me? to. I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> he just um, issued a challenge, you guys. <laughs> and he did to me, too, which I know the dice gods mock me, so it's probably going to go in his hey, favor. Hey, Aaron, you should, describe, oh, but... you should describe this attack of yours very flavorfully. All right. So um, Tariq is going to move to the south where this other guy is just chilling, and he's going to see if he can warm him up a little bit. Ah, with the get out of here. Uh, Produce flame. You mean ignition? So, <laughs> dang it, ignition. Oh, they really, Stupid really remaster. Made it confusing. <laughs> uh, I forgot to change my shortcuts out, and they all have the old name still. So that's no, why I, I said you. produce flame. Um, so yes, it is ignition. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, hey, ignition is a cooler name. He's going to ignite him with a twenty-nine. A twenty-nine, a 29. is going to hit. It's not a crit. Well, it should be. Um, <laughs> 
So he's gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do... I gotta open my character sheet up and do it the long way around. <laughs> One more time. One more time. Here we go. All right, so total damage. He takes nine fire damage. Nine fire. And he's fire. going to take... 18 bludgeoning. Jeez. So he, he gets hit real hard. Uh, with that yeah. Spell. Uh, he, he's like, ah, that singes my shirt, but I'm only bloodied. I'm fine. <laughs> he says that specifically. He says that specifically in that exact text <laughs> that is very descriptive. <laughs> if right, he had to assign I mean, a color, if he had to assign a color to his condition, it would probably be yellow. <laughs> He'd probably be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow as in fire? <laughs> as as in as in only half health. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Capri, it's your turn. All right. So Capri knows that these people have been hiding and kind of acting a little suspicious. But she really does want to understand why they're there. And if we kill them, we're not going to know. Just want to put that out there. Mm. So, There's probably plenty of them. <laughs> I'm sure there are, but Kepri would like to try it. Um, I don't know if I should do perception or try and speak with them just to get a little information out. Uh, you can try to like, like, how are you trying to describe this? Like, uh, do what you want to do roleplay wise, and I'll describe what kind of actions that might take. Yeah, sounds good. So Kepri is going to kind of yell across, and you know she's tiny and kind of hidden behind tiny so, or tawny, so she kind of pokes her head out on the other side, and she goes, "Hey." What's your deal anyway? <laughs> like, we're going to kill you like you did your friend. What is going on? Why are you hiding from us? This is really suspicious. That sounds like an intimidation check to me. All right. Then we're going to do an intimidation te- check, which Kepri has a plus seven. So Seven's not bad. Dude, it's not horrible, except when you roll a two on the die. <laughs> They're like, "Are you? Uh, did you guys bring a kid to this fight? I'm not scared of a kid. This little girl is a punk ass bitch. I'm a kid. Bitch. I'm a grown woman. Oh, you're a halfling. I can't tell in the dark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just and with we that, we have two light spells going on. Thank you. <laughs> I can't tell exactly. in the bright light. I am a shadow folk. I like the darkness. Please turn it off. I ha- can't you see well, my edgy eyeliner? <laughs> Kepri, knowing that this person's obviously not going to talk, goes ahead and casts his ignition. Oh, you're also casting ignition. Okay. Yep, I am. Help him see a little bit brighter. Exactly. Uh, 17's not going to hit, so I'm going to just uh, re-roll that. <laughs> you're going to hear point that? I did. I think a 26 is better. A 26 does hit. Yeah. It's not a crit, though. We already know that. Nine points of damage. So this person's making fun of Kepri for being tiny. I can't see because of the shadows. <laughs> and she's like, well, here's a little light for you, bitch. Fantastic. All right. Well, now it is my turn at long last. No, wait. Ramses has an action. And he can't do anything useful. <laughs> but he can do one action. Yeah. Ramses is going to stay where Ramses is. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So this guy uh, is going to be like, we're under attack. We're under attack. First action Fuck. comes up to the door. Second action opens it. Third action runs down the stairs. Darn it. Well, so much for that. So should we look through the dead person's pockets real quick? Are we still in initiative? No, we're done with initiative. The guy ran away. Okay. Um, It says he has a healing potion. <laughs> we might okay. need that. And a dark oh. vision elixir. Beast tolls. <gasps> Ooh, who wants the dark vision? I feel like Tawny should get the dark vision elixir. And it uh, works for 10 minutes. Mm, who has the best stealth? Oh, I also have one oh. already, so. You already have I a dark vision elixir? Yeah, I didn't realize I still had one in my inventory. <laughs> in your in your um, horde of supplies. <laughs> Looking at the party skills, the best in stealth is Ramses, followed by Kareth and Kepri. They're all within one point of each other, 11 and 10. And uh, I think when Kepri goes into her pest form, she also has a huge bonus to, uh, to stealth as well. But I don't remember the number. Yes. Okay. Probably so depends on Kepri. what form she takes to. Pest form is only one form. Would oh, she pest get form. a right. certain vision up? Uh, like when she changes into different mm-hmm. pests, does she get better vision? Uh, Not pest form, but animal form. Yes. It depends on the animal. Oh, gosh. Though. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, I think they all give her low light vision, though. It doesn't give her dark vision. It oh, does okay. give her. Imperson- I should be able to turn into a bat or something. It does. With that's sonar. That's aerial form. That's a. That's a higher level. <sighs> I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just be higher level already. <laughs> like. Good lord. Why didn't you consider being yeah, a higher level? Yeah, you really should um, <laughs> have us be higher level. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't do that. 
<laughs> you guys There's also saw. an alchemist fire in here, lesser. That would probably go to <laughs> Kareth for his thing, right? I was thinking that too. I like how we're not concerned at all about the guy that ran down the hall. <laughs> no, nope, we're just not at all. pillaging <laughs> sure. this body. So you we already Kareth. know that there's going to be enemies there, and like we're just gonna. Have, <laughs> why? Why try? Why try hiding our presence or anything? Well, first off, They're like yeah, let, let them it. get worked up. Um, you do know I still have invisibility stuff too, right? So if someone wants to take the dark vision and the invisibility stuff, we could actually have some kind of sneak attack. A true sneak attack. Oh, <laughs> that's time. true. Notably, speaking of treasure, they also have a silver chain around their neck as well. And it has the same symbol of the feared Wati gang the, of the so, grave robbers. So should we just start collecting these chains? Collecting them? <laughs> oh my yep. Yeah. I already we have to yep. wear a chain. <laughs> We probably don't know some kind of code. I mean, if they were smart, they would have a code. We could probably uh, use diplomacy or something and pass off as one of them. Tariq used to live on the streets. He could try for it. I mean, y'all are welcome to, but uh, silver's not really my color. (laughs) (laughs) Kepri would like to, while everyone else is trying to figure out how they're going to sneak, she's going to see if she can turn into a scarab again. And this time, not pop out randomly at people. <laughs> That's probably a good call. Uh, Do you want to cast invisibility on somebody? No, I think we're good. I mean, they're going to know we're there. I think yeah. our only um, way to even sneak up on them is uh, Kepri turning into her pest form and then, like, going ahead a little bit. Mm-hmm. And but that does put her in danger. Yeah, but if, it, yeah. She's just, if she stays out of reach... They're just going to assume it's a bug. Maybe okay. even do a little recon and see how yeah. many people are about to come up yeah. at us. All right. That's fine with me. Um, are you okay if I go ahead and turn into yeah, a bug? you can just hitch a ride on one of us. Okay. Should I turn into... Oh, I guess I can only turn into a scarab. Got it. Pest form is... Uh, mm-hmm. So pest form is more of like a flavor spell. It doesn't have any combat abilities. Okay. So for that reason, it's more like you choose what kind of pest you want to transform into. And they give you examples, but it has to be something tiny. So like uh, a small cat or an insect, a lizard, a rat. Um, I'm a fly then. You can because be a fly. Because that's a little Absolutely. less in. That's a little less inconspicuous. Sure. Uh, it's just or a not- little more inconspicuous. Sorry. Exactly. It's just uh, whatever form you pick can't fly until you have aerial shape later on. So I can crawl. Yeah. All right, I'm crawling over to the door. Cool. Door's already open. You see the stairs. All right, I'm crawling here, and I'm going down the stairs. Um, as you pass by, you see three Oh, I kegs. see a bucket. You see three kegs, uh, and these have a very powerful scent. You recognize it as the scent of saffron, which is a very expensive oh, spice. Saffron. Uh, very expensive. Each of these kegs, just at a glance, is probably worth about 50 gold pieces each. Wow. Okay. Car- Capri is going down the stairs. And she's just kind of flying, flying, she's flying. All right, you come down the stairs, uh, you kind of crawl down the stairs, uh, gently flying and stuff, and you see a long hallway, um, and there are two double set uh, doors on either side, one to the west and one to the east. And in this hallway, there are four, sorry, there are six torches, but only five of them are lit. And as you look around, you can see that three of those torches have been burning for a while, but two of them seem to have been lit very recently. And the one that's not lit, does it look like it's been burned at all? It looks like it hasn't been burned in a long time. Is there a way I can do a perception and see if I can hear anything through the doors? Sure. Roll me a perception check. All right. Um, you listen against either set of doors, and you hear a commotion coming from the western door, but it seems to be very distant. You can't, so distant that you can't make out what they're saying. Okay. Okay. I'm in this back hallway. Do I see anything in the very back of the hallway? You don't hear anything from the eastern doorway. All right. Anything back in this corner behind the stairs? Uh, dust. (laughs) I guess. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Capri is going to go back upstairs. Because obviously as a fly, just crawling along the ground, I can't open a door. Right. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> Correct. In this fantasy game where you can transform <laughs> where into Where I turn into a fly. <laughs> right, That's so the thing. 
<laughs> so Kepri's gonna come over here and she's gonna go ahead and pop out of animal form. Can we just talk about how the fact that she had light cast on her the entire time? So it's this glowing scarab walking down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lightning bug. That's what I should have done. I thought it's, as soon as she casts another spell, the light goes away. Uh, no, the light is for until your next daily preparations. It stays forever. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, they wouldn't even have known, so it's fine. Anyway, so Kepri comes back and she goes, so few things to note. One, um, there's a lot of saffron, I think, in here. Uh, you all know that's expensive, so we're looting it at the end. <laughs> Two, when we go down the stairs, there are two sets of double doors. The ones to the west, I can hear a lot of commotion through, but I can't quite pick up what they're saying. The east, I hear nothing. It's very eerily quiet. So, I'm not sure. The doors are all shut. There's also, I believe, six, um, lights. Five of them are lit, torches one torch is not lit which makes me wonder is that a mechanism to something i'm not sure hmm. uh once you guys like uh, actually Tariq only uh roll me a society check or actually roll me wati lore okay Tariq only lots of pressure <laughs> <laughs> you've done some time on the streets You've often heard <laughs> of this secret language that uh thieves and burglars especially give to each other you get the sense that that was probably some kind of code. Now, were you ever part of this gang? I'm not sure. Do you know exactly what this code means? I don't know. But you know that it's probably a way to silently and passively signal to other members of the gang about incoming danger. Great. Um, I think since there's five of us, those torches probably are letting everybody else know there's five enemies here. Of course, they probably wouldn't count Ramses, but... That's, hmm. I, I don't know. That's, I think it's some kind of code anyways. What if that's we went thing down I can and... connect. How many doors were there? Were there six doors? No, there are only four doors. Okay. So it wouldn't be the unlit torches. would be the six. Yeah. So what if I go down there and I just blow them all out? Then we can't see. Or, or they'll just see us. <laughs> the doors are shut though. And then they'll come out and be like, oh, no danger and go back and do their own thing. Right? Mm hmm. I don't know. We can see. You guys want to try that? If someone has a better idea, please say what if, something. <laughs> what if we <laughs> What if we blow out the torches, Sintani in with dark vision and in invisibility, and the first person that comes out, she just has at it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that sounds fine. I Okay. Tawny, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> Tawny would probably just rather go <laughs> knock on the door and be like, Let's what's get up, out here. What's up, bitches? I'm home. <laughs> I kind of just want to go kick the door in. <laughs> what if we just play this like Suicide Squad? Let's just walk down the hallway and be like, we're looking for Timonib. Let's go. <laughs> I'm good with that. You just want to challenge them? and At this, we're at looking this for point, a fight. like, first off, this gang has been around for too long. They got to go. <laughs> <laughs> She's been thinking about this on the, the hour it took us to get there. It's like... These stupid silver chained people. Not this again. They're going to die tonight. <laughs> On that hour long walk, I was mentally going yeah. through all of the reasons like after why this, day this game had, has to go. Is going to die. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> namely, she had to walk an hour to get there. <laughs> namely. Well, to be fair, the hour long trek wasn't the gang's fault. It was all the undead stopping you guys. That was their fault. <laughs> but I still had to deal with a lot more undead than I had to originally if they weren't <laughs> sticking their nose into shit they didn't need to be. Well, that was timid, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to take out your aggression on them? Still timid's yeah. fault. <laughs> <It's all> <laughs> We're going to have to have a serious talk Wait, with what him. What did these silver chain him? people do to us? Like, <laughs> we just killed this guy and he, he didn't even do anything to us yet. <laughs> he attacked uh. first. It was only self-defense. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Um, so the suggestion was to turn me invisible? Uh, if that's what, like, um, to turn invisible and then uh, bl uh, blow out the firelight and give you the dark vision. So that way the only... Um, only like and then you can knock on the door make noise or whatever try to get people to come out and they won't be able to see you but you could see them okay i'll try i don't think it's smart to send just tawny because the way with invisibility they're still gonna get a perception check to like try and find her true but also um if if i'm right about the torches 
I, I have no idea if I'm right. I just think five torches, five of us. That would make them, th- their, like, torches seem like misinformation. Like, there's actually only four of us when our heaviest hitter is actually invisible. Ooh. What do you guys think about that? And forget about the torches and whatnot. Um, it, like, we just go, and then, like, we just keep Tiny invisible. <laughs> and they think there's only four of us. I can turn back, and I still have one more focus point. I can turn right back into a scarab and go down with Tawny. Well, you can also, like, refocus that focus point back. You're not in combat. Refocused. But also, um, I can go down, but I can, turn into, I can turn into a lightning bug. Oh, my gosh. And go down with Tawny, if that makes yeah, people but, feel better. That way, Well, Tawny's you don't want to have light on you at all. Like, it's okay if you're, like, sitting on my shoulder or, like, flying around me, but you don't want to have light like gathering attention okay. that's fine i can turn it off and i can turn back into <laughs> this, this past 15 past minutes form. kepri's been like light on light off light on light off <laughs> <laughs> on off on off okay kepri is a fly again i'm gonna go sit on tawny all right any of you guys gonna go down the stairs um i guess i'll drink the well i don't need to drink the the vision thing yet right because yeah if, if we're gonna all go down i mean there's no point in doing the whole lights out thing okay so you're because then we wouldn't be able to see casting invisibility on me um yes yeah, so i have a scroll of invisibility so we'll cast that so are we gonna have tawny go in front of us or be behind us and then we could like just she'll just be following um, along invisible. i think i should follow along because if I'm in front, there's more likelihood that they're going to notice, like, the okay. like, faint outline of, like, me distorting the people behind me. Okay. Um, I'm wearing a silver chain, so I can I was getting first. ready to say, well, I was actually getting ready to say, why don't you have me go ahead and wear the silver chain? Um, because I have, I think, a higher deception. Well, we have two silver chains, so you and... Oh, okay. So I'll yeah. wear another one. Okay, so we'll both go in the front wearing yes. the chains. Oh, great. It's Dumb and Dumber again. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm in Scarab Pest form again. <laughs> dumb and Dumber, Dumber, Dumber is I also feel like coming. we've been here before. <laughs> uh, but this time we are not stupefied. We're just stupid. <laughs> okay. I love that conversation. All right. But dang, we look good. On where we go. All right. Follow the stairs. Let's see where you guys are going to go. Ramses is going to stay at the door by the stairs. If anyone tries to come up this way, he's going to beat him up. You got it. Um, as you guys are climbing down the stairs, Tariq, you try to take a step forward. You see this hallway. Oh. You see the five torches lit one of them off. And just as you're about to take a step forward, you suddenly see the floor beneath you crack open and give way. What? What? And I'll see you guys next week. What? 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 <laughs> Y'all fell for a trap, bitch! <laughs> oh, no. What? There. So does that mean Tariq did uh, oh, not no. succeed at his uh, knowledge check? From Hey everyone, we hope you enjoyed the episode. If you liked what you heard, then please like, share, or subscribe to the Mithril Tabletop. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, and Instagram. Or always feel free to email us at themithraltabletop at gmail.com. We'll see you next week. Music and sound effects are provided to you by Envato Elements. The Mummy's Mask is copyright 2014. Mummy's Mask images, characters, and artwork are a trademark of Paizo Incorporated.